This is it. Let me give you one piece of advice. Be honest. He knows more than you can imagine. At last. One of the things that I love besides Sharia is history. So I did a full study on history. And I found that there is a trend in history. There is a continuous trend that repeats itself time after time. And let me share with you some of the thoughts on this issue. Civilizations go through a certain path. They start weak and they start to grow gradually, gradually. It takes years, usually hundreds of years until they become uh, at their peak, at the top. An example of that is the Persian civilization before Islam started weak, gradually grew until it peaked 2,000 years after that. The Byzantines, the Romans, took about 1,200 years of gradual growth until they peaked. And you see this in many, many civilizations. But what many people did not recognize is that when civilizations collapse, they collapse so quickly. And let me give some examples. Let's take the Persians. We say 2,000 years of growth until they reached the top of the world. They were the highest in civilization, competing only with the Romans. The lands that they controlled was so huge, extending from India to Turkey to Iraq, part of the Arab world, part of the Arab Peninsula were their allies, and their capital was Al Madain in Al Iraq. Huge, military speaking the most powerful army in the world. In each battle that they face, the Muslims, their armies are usually 250, 300, 350,000. We're talking 1400 years ago. 1400 years ago. These numbers are huge today. How many armies in the world today have these numbers? And this is not the whole army, this is only a sector of their army, part of their army. That's how huge they were. Very strong civilization. Military equipment, they had the best fighters and the best equipment in the world. They used the technology that was not only Persian, but also Roman and Indian, all available for them. You want to talk about science, philosophy, art, whatever. They were the highest, competing only with the Romans. So they were not a weak country when the Muslims started to attack them. They were not divided, they were united under one king. Huge empire, the Persian Empire. Very strong, the highest in the world, united, excelled in every area of life. Superpower. How long did, did, that, did that empire take until it collapsed?
cemetery. Isn't it sunnah to go to the cemetery, to remember those who have died, to make dua for them? It is sunnah. The modern godless world builds its cities in such a way that the cemetery is located far away. So you seldom ever go to the cemetery except when you have to bury somebody. But we will build our cemeteries in the village somewhere contiguous with the residential area. So people while walking to and from the masjid can frequently visit the cemetery and remember death. And so prepare for that day when instead of walking to the cemetery, we'll have to be carried to the cemetery. Schools. The village must eventually establish its own primary school. A number of villages can combine to establish a secondary school. Contrary to the existing Muslim school system in this country, the Muslim school in the village would not accept any state funding and hence it would not be subject to any state control. Education would be based entirely on the system constructed by the village itself. There will be no division between secular education and religious education. So morning you go to school and evening you go maktab. Now, we don't want to create people with dual personalities. Rather, all will combine in the school and be brought together as a harmonious whole and we insist that the Qur'an be the fountainhead, the foundation of all knowledge and all education. But in addition to teaching in school, children and general education for people, villagers, we need to do something more. We need to produce our scholars because Allah Himself speaks in the Quran about the ulama. And if He speaks about the ulama, you're going to pay a price if you do not struggle to create your learned scholars. And learned scholars don't have to be men as well alone. Learned scholars can be both men as well as women. And so the villages combining together must ensure that an institution of higher Islamic learning, an institution of higher Islamic learning is established like what Malana Ansari established in Pakistan, the Alimia Institute of Islamic Studies, which produced Malana Siddiq Nasir, Sheikh Ali Mustafa, who was here, uh, Malana Wafi Muhammad, myself and others. This would train our people so we can produce the scholars, the Odana, to be able to teach and to guide our people in the generations to come. Agriculture. The village must produce its own food. Why? Because Surah Al-Kahf of the Quran has guided us to that. <laughs>